Hi, let's read chapter six today. Chapter six is called Old Taylor. Don't you like socks anymore? Tiffy asked Mr. Bricker, who was trying to um, work on a section of the backyard while socks rolled in the dirt at his feet. The Brickers planned to make a vegetable garden so Charles William could have nice, fresh vegetables to eat. Sure we like him, Tiffy, said Mr. Bricker. Then how come he, and then how come he sleeps in the garage? Asked Tiffy. We can't have a cat that bites in the house with a baby, Mr. Bricker explained. He doesn't bite me. He could sleep in my home if he wanted. Tiffy looked at Socks squirming in the dirt. He would have to spend the rest of the afternoon grooming himself. A small price to pay for a good roll that satisfied all the places he wanted scratched and made his skin tingle. He missed the sort of brushing Mrs. Risley had given him, but the babysitter never came again. The young couple could not afford her. Tiffy squatted down beside Socks. Do you want to come and live at my house? She asked. Socks, who had finished rolling in the dirt, sat up and, after considering Tiffy a moment, allowed her to pet him. Since he had become an outdoor cat, he was grateful for attention from anyone, even Tiffy, and the two had formed a friendship. See, said Tiffy to Mr. Bricker, Socks likes me. He wants to live at my house. She made the mistake of patting his head and Socks moved away. Petting and patting were not the same. He was disappointed in her. A cat's heart is where his food dish is, said Mr. Bricker. <laughs> that means that the cat will love whoever feeds him best. Mr. Bricker was wrong. Socks's dish and water bowl had been moved to the back porch, and his bed had been moved to the garage, where a window was left open so he could come and go. Still, his heart remained in the house with his family. Loneliness and curiosity drove Socks to spend more and more time sitting on the window sill, watching all that went on inside. He watched. Let's look at the picture. Here he is, outside the window, looking inside at the baby and the mommy. Mm, he looks lonely. He watched Mr. Bricker shadow box in front of the playpen and listened to Charles William laugh. He watched Charles William grab Brown Bear by one leg and beat him against the playpen, and he heard him shout, Hey, dead, dead! He was curious for a closer look at the plastic ball filled with water and sloshing plastic fish. He saw Charles William support himself on his hands and knees and crawl across the playpen. He watched him grab the bars and pull himself unsteadily to his feet. See the kitty, said Mrs. Bricker many times a day as she looked up from her typewriter. Writer, typewriter. The kitty is looking at you. You might not know what a typewriter is. It's an old fashioned thing where you would type your stuff but you type it directly onto a paper. So there was no computer back then. <laughs> it's a long time after this story was written that computers were invented for the house. So you would tap on the keyboard and it would touch, something would touch the um, paper with ink on it and type the letter. The kitty is looking at you. Charles William paused in throwing his toys outside his playpen or pounding on a toy to stare at Socks. Sometimes he watched Socks without his mother telling him to. Loneliness was not the only trouble in Socks's life. Blue Jays scattered his dry food and swooped at him whenever they came to steal it. He felt threatened on Tuesday mornings when the garbage men came and he was afraid of the milkman. You know how the garbage people will come and collect your garbage? Well, in the olden days, the men would get out of the truck and go collect the garbage cans and dump them into the truck with their hands. 
You may have seen that in the movie. And in the olden days, people would deliver people would bring milk to your house in a glass bottle. But his biggest worry was old Taylor, the black cat with the torn ears who lived across the back fence and belonged to the family named Taylor. Although the fence was the property of the house rented by the Brickers and should have been part of Fox's territory, Old Taylor made it known by sleeping on the fence, made it his own by sleeping on the fence whenever the sun came out. This habit annoyed Sox, who sometimes wanted to sit on the fence out of Tiffy's reach when he grew bored of her. However, the two cats had come to an understanding, an agreement. Old Taylor would beat up Sox if Sox tried to sit on the fence while Old Taylor was using it. Hmm, so the understanding is that Sox gets beaten up if he tries to sit on the fence at the same time as the other cat. That doesn't sound like a very agreeable agreement. What do you think? One morning, Sox, who had fallen asleep on the warm hood of the station wagon, was awakened by the sound of a late spring rain falling against the garage. The car hood had gotten cold and hard, after a bow, a stretch, and a brief wash, Sox sprang to the windowsill, where he saw that the neighborhood was still dark. There was no hope of breakfast, but he might find dry food left in his dish from the night before. The grass was cold and wet to his paws as he ran through the downpour in the direction of the back porch step. In, in the dim light, Sox saw a sinister black shape crouched at his dish in the dry spot under the roof. Old Taylor! Through the sound of rainwater gurgling in the drain pipe, Socks heard the crunch of teeth crushing his dry cat food. <gasps> this would not do at all. Old Taylor had his side of the fence, and Socks had his side. Socks would not fight about the fence itself, but his food was a different matter. He crouched, flattened his ears, his ears, and hissed, hoping to frighten the other cat, but prepared to defend his dish if he must. Old Taylor merely glanced in his direction and went on chewing and crunching. Sock's honor as a cat could not excuse such rudeness. He came forward, still hissing through the rain. Old Taylor stopped gnawing and grinding. He flattened his ears and hissed back from the dry spot on the step. By now, Socks was not only angry, he was soaking wet. He ignored the rain and continued to crouch, changing his hiss to a light sing-song wail intended to warn old Taylor that he meant what he said. His wail did not frighten old Taylor. The black cat returned the sound louder and meaner. The youngster was going, no young cat was going to tell him anything. Ooh, boy, it's getting... The fur of the two cats rose along their spines. They wailed and howled and caterwauled. And all during that song, they were moving closer to one another with their fangs bared and their ears laid back. Ooh. Oh, maybe just a... Oh. We'll have to find out what happens tomorrow. <laughs>